you know, lifting a heavy weight above your head is not really a good idea if you suffer with a heart condition. Hi everyone and welcome to Exercise for Health. I'm Richard and today I'm going to give you some advice on how to exercise safely if you have coronary artery disease or suffer with angina. If you're new to this channel we offer tips, advice and exercises each week to help you manage your health condition with physical activity. So go ahead and tap the subscribe button below and the bell icon if you want to be notified of when we upload a new video. Now, before I give you my 10 tips for exercising, if you have had a myocardial infarction, commonly known as a heart attack, if you suffer with angina pectoris, chest pains, or if you've had heart surgery, including angioplasty, stents, or a bypass graft, or even if you have had a diagnosis of coronary artery disease, please note that this information is not intended to replace that given to you of a health professional. This is general advice offered to help you while you're exercising and won't take into consideration any heart complications you may have, such as arrhythmias, if you have a pacemaker or ICD fitted, or if you have a less common heart condition, such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Wow, that was a mouthful. What I would recommend, if you're ever unsure, is to speak with a member of your cardiac rehab team or your doctor who can offer you personalized advice. In addition, the tips in this video are provided for people that are at least post six weeks from their cardiac event or heart surgery and have already undergone some sort of exercise rehabilitation program. So with that, let's just get stuck in. Tip one, don't carry out exercise if you've had a virus or if you've recently had a viral vaccination jab for at least 48 hours after. Viruses make your heart work harder to try and fight the infection. Likewise, don't carry out exercise if you're feeling unwell or have experienced any change in symptoms. This is particularly important if your onset of angina has worsened, as that would indicate has become unstable. So if you normally suffer with angina, there should be a pattern to when you know you're gonna get the onset of it, which should be relieved by a dose of your GTN spray, which you should keep on you while you're exercising. You also shouldn't continue to exercise if you start experiencing any unusual chest pain. Tip two. Ensure the environment you're exercising in is suitable. Ideally, this should be a temperature between 18 and 23 degrees Celsius with a humidity of around 65%. If it's outside these parameters, then take additional measures while exercising. For example, additional clothing if it's cold or reduce the intensity of the exercise if it's hot or humid. Also make sure you've got access to drinking water at all times. Tip three. When you take part in an exercise program, whether in a gym or class or even at home, make sure you do a lengthy warm up and cool down. The warm up should last for 15 minutes to give the coronary arteries time to dilate better, allowing for an improved oxygen supply to the heart and allowing the heart to slowly adapt to the increase in demands. The warm up should be conducted at a steady pace, allowing for a gradual increase in your heart rate and could include walking or using a stationary bike and by the end of it, your heart rate should be within 20 beats of your target exercise heart rate. The cool down should last for at least 10 minutes, again of steady state activity to allow the heart rate to recover gradually and to allow the blood pressure to come down slowly, therefore reducing the risk of heart arrhythmias. Tip four, the main part of your exercise program can be steady state or an interval based workout depending on your venue. This means in a gym, predominantly using cardio machines such as bikes, treadmills, cross trainers, rowers, etc., interspersed with muscular strength and endurance exercise for an active recovery. In a home or group setting, spending one to two minutes exercising large muscle groups, mainly leg-based exercises, that initiate more of a heart rate response, followed by an active recovery exercise of about 10 repetitions, normally arm exercises with light weights, and this will allow a slight reduction in the heart rate. This will allow the heart rate to remain in a given range that's normally supplied by your cardiac team. This is normally between 80 and 120 beats per minute for most individuals, depending on their age, their cardiac history and their medications. Tip five, during your exercise routine, it's important that you keep your feet moving. So don't stand still waiting for an exercise. This has important implications on your blood pressure and reduces the load placed on the heart by keeping the blood circulating around the body. It's a bit like being on a car journey. 
Your engine is more efficient if working on a motorway where you achieve more miles per gallon than if you have to accelerate and decelerate more frequently. Although this analogy doesn't really work for electric cars. Tip six, make sure you monitor your effort throughout your workout. It's a great idea to do a heart rate check before you start while you're at rest, just to make sure that the heart rate isn't elevated, which would indicate it's already having to work harder. Your heart rate at rest should be well below 100 beats per minute. And note that some medications such as beta blockers have the effects of reducing the heart rate even further. And I've seen some cardiac rehab clients with rest and heart rates in the realms of 40 beats per minute. You should carry out a heart rate check midway through your main activity to ensure that you're working at the appropriate level. This can be using a heart rate monitor if you have one or doing a manual pulse check for 15 seconds and then multiplying it by four. This is good practice and you can also use it alongside the rate of perceived exertion scale to ask yourself how hard you feel you're working. You should be around a four, five or six on this zero to 10 scale. Tip seven. Where possible, stick to compound exercises rather than isolated ones. This basically means performing actions where two or more joints are moving rather than just one. Carrying out isolated exercises will increase what's known as the peripheral resistance, adding the pressure back on the heart. Doing compound or large muscle group exercises will reduce this resistance. Tip eight, don't lift any heavy weights or perform any explosive exercises as this puts excessive stress on the heart. You should be able to manage at least two minutes of any cardio exercise non-stop and 10 repetitions for any active recovery exercise when using any weights. In addition, avoid pushing any weights above the head as the gravitational effect on the blood being pushed into a small cellular muscle structure in the arms puts an excessive load back on the heart. Finally, avoid any isometric exercises. This is where muscles are being contracted, but the body's not moving, as this forces systolic blood pressure to rise. Tip nine, don't do any exercises lying down during the main activity, and always try to keep your head above your heart. If you lie down while your heart rate is elevated during exercise, then the heart receives lots of blood back from the body faster, pushing the heart rate up even higher to get it back around the body, increasing the stress on the heart. Save any floor exercises, if they're really important to you, till after a thorough cool down when you're back to a pre-exercise state. Tip 10. If you've had open heart surgery for a bypass graft, for example, then take additional care with exercises that work the muscles of the chest. This can include press-ups, using a chest press machine, and even just stretching the pectoral muscles. Just act conservatively when performing any of these and be aware of what you're feeling. To conclude, I thought it would be worth mentioning that we are all unique. Someone watching this may have been a firefighter, super fit and strong before having a heart attack, so may be in a position to conduct in higher intensity interval training. Some people watching may be very deconditioned or have other health conditions, meaning that they have to do some of their exercises seated. Essentially, listen to your body and take the professional advice that you've been given by the health professionals and feel confident in knowing that a safe and effective exercise routine two to three times a week will greatly improve your outlook and reduce the risk of a further event. Don't forget, other physical activities will also help. Walking, gardening, dancing, cycling, golf, and so on. Finally, if you want a home workout to follow that is cardiac rehab based, then click on the pop-up banner above my head to watch an exercise video on this channel that follows the principles that I've outlined today. If you found this video informative, please give it a like by clicking the thumbs up button below and share it with friends to help this channel grow so more people can benefit from these videos. And remember to stay active, keep moving, and I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video today, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click here to subscribe to this channel or click here to watch a recent video. See you soon.